Hello everybody, welcome to a place called Dunsfold. Now I've come here today to have a look at the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel 2 here in this nice sort of orangey colourway. This is in a UK size 13 and a half, which is my normal New Balance size. The weight is pretty good for this sort of shoe, about 265 grams. That compares very well with, say, the next percent, which is only slightly lighter at 250. It doesn't have a carbon plate, but it's possibly the softest shoe I've got at the moment, maybe even softer than the Nike Invincible. Oh, it's a different kind of shoe. It seems to be very well loved by my fellow shoe tubers, and they'd probably put that as their top shoe of the year so far. Must say I'm sort of a bit on the fence with it so far. I think my main problem, it's very soft and perhaps a bit, just a bit too soft for me. I feel like I'm sort of sinking a bit as I'm going on the road. So let's have a quick look at the shoe first of all. So if we have a look at the shoe on foot, I've got my customary non-matching bright green Nike sock on. It does actually help to see how see-through the upper is in the Rebel 2. There's very little material to that, it's very breathable. It's actually a bit wider than I imagined it would be. When I first got them I thought it was quite a narrow shoe, but as you can see here I've got quite a lot of folding. I've had to pull in the laces quite a lot. That probably means it's going to suit a wide range of foot sizes. This is just a standard medium width one and normally probably in a New Balance I would take a narrow width if I had one. But you can see I've got the laces up pretty tightly here and it's sort of the slightly sort of offset lacing, although you can sort of see the patterns going that way, it kind of gives the impression. It doesn't have the double knot, which some people are a bit annoyed about. But in a way, it's kind of like a sort of a racing type fit. If we compare that to say the RC Elite version one here, then it's definitely a lot narrower shoe, this one, which actually suits me better. Now I think some people have commented on the fact that the shoe comes up short and I think the reason for that is that they've got this reinforcement around the top here. If I compare it now to the Fuel Cell TC, it doesn't have that enforcement, which I think effectively lengthens the shoe. So I think that's probably why some people are saying it's coming up shorter. Now that's bringing in the other shoe to have a look at the shoe in more detail with my foot off. And you can see there's only one, two, three, four eyelets there. There's no double knot either. I think that's largely to reduce the weight because obviously the less eyelets you have, then the shorter laces you're going to need. The tongue is very minimal, as you might expect in such a lightweight shoe. And similarly, there's not much to the Achilles counter here, but I'm not getting any heel rubbing at all there. So let's look at, have a look at the rear of the shoe. Now, one thing that strikes me already that I've got a bit of wear there on toe off, and I've only done about 40 miles in this year, so that's slightly concerning to be that worn after such little time. Obviously, there's a bit of a minimal tread here. You've got the reinforcement where it's kind of needed and the exposed fuel cell in the middle there where perhaps you don't land so much. So how does it feel on foot? Well, the first thing I found, it's only got a six mil drop, which isn't perhaps what I'm really used to. I've worn Nike shoes and Adidas shoes for many years, and most of them have a 10 mil drop. So I think that's what I kind of prefer, or perhaps I just got used to. And that actually did feel quite noticeable when I was running, because the six mil drop felt like I was sort of quite slappy feeling. And also the fact it's so soft, when I looked at my stats, I definitely had a lower cadence than normal and a higher VO. And that was a particular problem the other day when I had a bit of a quad niggle that I've got at the moment. I took them out the next day and I felt that was a bit hard work just getting off the ground in them because of the soft feeling. So when I went back to the endorphin speeds, I had a bit of more comfortable time because they're just a bit firmer. So what do I think this shoe is best for? Well, I think it's probably a shoe that you can use as an everyday trainer if you like a very lightweight shoe and also perhaps more up to a tempo shoe. I've actually taken this shoe out a few times when it's been raining quite hard, largely by accident because it actually started to rain quite hard in the middle of the run. And it did okay. Didn't take on too much more water, I felt, and the grip was okay. I didn't slide, didn't fall down, but obviously it's not a shoe really designed for the best of grips. It is a road shoe, first and foremost. I think being so soft, it wouldn't be so great on the trails, but I think if it's a reasonably hard tra trail, it would be okay. So what shoe do I think these compare to? Well, one shoe I've got that I found is quite similar is the RC Elite from New Balance, which is this one here. Now, in some ways, you might think that the Rebel 2 and the RC Elite are the same shoe, just the fact that the Rebel 2 doesn't have a plate. But there is a slight difference that the RC Elite has a 10 mil drop and it has a bit less stack at the front. So if I line the two up here, there's the RC Elite on the left and the Rebel 2 on the right, both the same size. Interestingly, the weights are the more identical. The RC Elite is only a few grams lighter. But I hope you can see at the front here that the RC Elite has a slightly lower stack at the front. And so the overall drop on the shoe, the RC Elite has a 10 mil drop and the Rebel 2 has six. Having said that, the RC Elite is about twice the price. So you might think, well, you're paying, what, £100 just to have a bit of carbon plate in the technology in there? But maybe there's a trickle-down effect because they do all the research for the RC Elite and then they perhaps bring out a very similar shoe minus the carbon plate. But you do wonder why these carbon shoes are so expensive because 
But then the day, it's a very similar shoe. They just put a bit less stack in the Rebel 2 and they put a carbon plate in the RC Elite. So which one do I prefer out of the two? Well, I think I have to say I definitely prefer the RC Elite. I think it just feels like it's a more natural shoe to me. And although it's quite soft, it has that sort of the plate to give you that bit of feedback. Whereas the Rebel felt like I was more sort of sinking a bit. So I'm still struggling a bit to see what the Rebel 2 would be best for for me. And is it really a shoe that's just going to aggravate these quad problems that I've got? So is the Rebel 2 a shoe that you've got or looking to get? It'd be interesting to see in the comments below whether it's a shoe for you or not and if you've been liking it or not. So for me, it's a shoe that, yeah, it's promising in some ways, but I've got a few reservations about it. And are these new wave of very soft shoes like the Rebel 2 and the Invincible, in fact, the whole sort of fuel cell line, is that the way things should be going? Should you be just having this really, really pillowy feeling on foot when you go out? I mean, compared to the so the Adios or the Boston that I was wearing a few years ago, these just seem so, so much softer. And you put them on and they're thinking that's great, but is that really what is best for your feet? I don't know. Time will tell, I suppose. So I hope you found this little look interesting and look forward to seeing the next one then. Bye.